Hi everyone and welcome to today's Dermal Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Pretty big day on Dermal Hospital, so let's get right to it. At the floating rib, Dylan shows Nathan's, Nathan the pictures and he's a bit tentative to say the least. Um, and then he's a little territorial about Maxi and Maxi asks if he's going to act like Julian. So Nathan admits that he wasn't thrilled when she was shooting the movie and he doesn't like the idea of a million guys looking at her in the magazine but he does admit he can't beat up a million guys. So I guess it, admitting it is the first step to uh, you know moving past that issue. You know Nathan that's like the one fault I have with him is like this kind of territorial thing he gets but he at least he's like trying to work through it um, at the Metro Court restaurant Tracy kind of zoned out which was weird and Hayden is concerned and Tracy uh, recounts everything that Hayden said in their deal so then Tracy says Hayden reminds her a lot of herself and mentions Hayden's father and that's not okay and upsets Hayden and then Dylan interrupts and Hayden tells Dylan to have Tracy see a doctor and Tracy says that Hayden was just being Hayden with that doctor comment didn't mean anything don't don't listen to her at Windermere Nicholas is looking up Baxter Corbin uh, not Rachel as I thought yesterday uh, but at least I kind of had the last name right a little bit and uh, it was the guy that he met in Vegas and I have to get a new prescription or a bigger TV you vote for which one <laughs> so uh, the this guy was head of financial institutions and he's about to look up Baxter Corbin and Rachel when he gets an alert that Liz's house blew up it's like the Port Charles news, like local news alert. Um, at the hospital, a lot of stuff happens at the hospital, so let's work through it little by little. Sab wakes up to Jason in the room, and she's anxious to get home to Danny, uh, but Jason runs down the list of things she's been through and says the doctors have a lot to observe, and they're so cute together. <laughs> and Alexis arrives. Uh, she brings a Christina and Molly. So Jason's going to go check on Jake. Christina wants all the details um, about Jason uh, from Sam. And Molly slips about how Jason knew to look for Sam at Liz's. And Christina clarifies that she was at school and Molly was with TJ at the time with the floating rib, right? Uh, so Sam tells Christina to come clean because Alexis knows that she's lying. And Molly tells Alexis that Julian shouldn't bad talk Jason because it would upset Sam and alienate Michael. Or Molly and Christina wouldn't alienate Michael. Um, well, actually, yeah, it, it would. I don't know what I'm saying. Well, it's not like Michael's a huge fan. It, it, never mind. It was a slip of the tongue. I don't have to clarify. Let's move on. Uh, so the nurse tells Elizabeth that Felix sent an email around about the explosion and... The staff brought things in to help her replace things she lost, which is, like, so nice. I can't even. And Jason comes in. They don't know what to tell Jake about what happened about the house. And, of course, Jake asks if they're a family again. So they say they are a family, but they're not together. And they also know everything that he did, and he's not being punished or in trouble. So Liz tells Jake that lying and telling stories is bad, which um, is kind of rich, but... She actually went on to impress me today, so don't don't be mean yet. Uh, so he said, uh, Jake says that he didn't mean for Sam to get hurt, and Liz tells Jake that she lied to Jason, and that's why he left. And he, you know, he, Jason is going to be in Jake's life, but not in hers. And I, I'm really impressed with her. I, I'm not going to lie. I am. I think this is definitely some development. Um, so Jason tells Jake that they know what happened to Sam, uh, that it was an accident, and he thinks that he shouldn't, oh, Jake thinks that, like, he shouldn't have run away from Sam, he should have done something to help, but he's a kid. And then Sam comes in and tells Jake that she's okay, uh, Jake, like, thinks she's not real, but they're like, yeah, she's real, she's here, um, and... Uh, Liz tells Jake that Sam is a good person and she shouldn't have treated Sam the way she did and she even says that Sam is Jason's wife and they would have been together if it weren't for her and he should talk to Sam and get to know her and he actually might like her and then she leaves the room. So like... Talk about going from zero to a hundred in like five seconds. I think Elizabeth like... I was impressed with her today. So, Jake wants to go home. 
obviously not happening. And Nicholas shows up to talk to Elizabeth and he offers Windermere as a place to stay. I have something in my eye. Um, and then Jason offers to bring Cameron and Aiden uh, to see Jake and Sam offers to bring Danny. But Jake's tired and Sam tells Jason to stay with Jake and she'll make her way back to her room. Griffin Mumro asks Sonny why he's hiding things and Sonny says he wanted to know he could trust him. So Sonny tells him that sometimes it's better to appear weak when you're actually strong and then uh, tells him like to stick with his doctor business and he'll stick to his. So Epiphany told Griffin to ask Sonny about his progress that like she wasn't at liberty to say and Griffin wants to know how far along he is so he can continue treatment and he wants to give him the best shot he's got and then Sonny their appointment ends Sonny leaves. So Christina uh, runs into Sonny and tells him what happened to Sam and Christina mentions the wedding next week and she was planning on coming home and she asked him to come to the wedding for her. So Christina says that Julian would hate him being there but Sonny would look like the hero and Julian couldn't say anything about it and Sonny's like when did you get so good at strategy? <laughs> so Alexis and Molly come around and Alexis says there's obviously uh, something going on with Christina and she needs to tell them. And she tells them that she had, oh, uh, Christina tells them she had a situation with one of her professors. And Alexis asks if it was the woman she brought to the house, Parker. And Molly's like, because <laughs> remember, Molly knows Parker, but Molly knows, from the diary, but Molly knows Parker as like a guy <laughs> so um yeah and uh Sonny and Alexis want Christina to divulge details so Elizabeth is on the phone I think with Aiden and then with Cameron and she tells them that the doctors and nurses uh brought things for them uh, so you know they're they're gonna have stuff and that Jake is doing better, and Dr. Monroe overhears her talking, so it's Monroe, not like Monroe, uh, overhears her talking to Cameron, and she promises she'll fix everything. Um, and Griffin asks if there's anything he can do to help. Back at Windermere, Nicholas comes back, and Hayden was reading about Liz's house. Nick asks about her family, because they hardly know each other, and, like, she knows all of his family. And, you know, uh, he wants to get to know her. And she says that her family has an ugly side, and the heavy hitters are gone. Uh, but she doesn't want to talk about it. Oh, and by the way, both her parents are dead. So, sorry, Nicholas. I'm not in scene. <laughs> Maxie says that she notices... Uh, you know, to Nathan, you know, she notices when women look at him, but like she knows he's a good guy and like he's not going to do anything. So like he needs to be the same way with her. Like people are going to look at her, but you know, that doesn't mean she has to act on anything. Um, Dylan wants to know more about Hayden's father and Tracy says that he's an acquaintance. Uh, Nick wants to talk about her dead parents uh, and she doesn't want to. Imagine that. Um, and she considers uh, he and Spencer her family now. Uh, Griffin tells Liz that, you know, he got Felix's email and, you know, he doesn't have any kids stuff or anything. So he got her a gift card, which I think is, like, really nice because, like, he just started working there. So it's not like he knows her from a hole in the ground. Um, and even she, like, says how nice it was. And he offers that, like, if there's anything else he can do. Uh, Christina says that Parker wants her to do her home study at home because there's too many distractions at Middleton. And she says she decides that she decided after she went back to school, you know, when everyone was partying and, you know, she just wanted to do her work. And um, Alexis and Sonny aren't buying the whole thing. Um, Molly asks Christina about Parker being a woman. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about that because, like, we haven't really heard Christina's, like, her, her feelings about it. We've just kind of, like, seen a few scenes, but we don't, like, really know what's going on with her. You know what I mean? And Jake is glad that Sam's not dead. Well, that's good. <laughs> and um, Jason thanks Sam for everything she said to Jake, and Sam wants Jason to help her get out of the hospital. And he's like, oh, my goodness. Like, there's so much <laughs> that they need to look at you for. Um, so that is it for today's General Hospital recap. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to keep in mind uh, character of the week so you can vote on Friday. Or if you have it down pat and you want to vote today, leave it down in the comments. I look throughout the whole week. And uh, if you're feeling charitable, 
charitable like Felix and the staff at General Hospital, uh, please look in the description. I have a link to a You Caring campaign uh, for saving our animal sanctuary. And if you donated a dollar or so, it would mean so, so much. And I will see you tomorrow for more General Hospital. I hope you have a great day. And I will see you then. Bye.